Coming up on 649 on your Thursday morning, it's time now for the morning rush. We're learning more about a Rio Rancho teen who was found with drugs, cash and a gun on campus. That's according to police. School resource officers at Rio Rancho High School received a tip saying a student may have had drugs on campus. Officers searched his backpack and the, and the car and say they found THC, cocaine and a baggie of mushrooms and a handgun. He's now facing three felony charges as well as one misdemeanor. The Court of Appeals has now upheld the conviction of a woman who crashed a stolen car into a mother and daughter, killing them both. Alexis Groves was convicted of vehicular homicide in 2021, but was appealing that verdict. Groves and her attorneys claim that judges were biased against her. The Court of Appeals affirmed the convictions, keeping Groves in prison to serve 25 and a half year sentence. New Mexico police are working to better utilize the red flag law. The law has been in place for three years, but a majority of counties in the state haven't tried to use it yet. Since 2020, only 55 petitions have been filed from law enforcement, 27 of which have come from Bernalillo County. Erica. And here's a look at our school day forecast. It is a cool start this morning, but it's going to stay cool today as well. Highs will only be in the low 50s, so wear your fall jackets and your extra layers through the afternoon. Albuquerque's zero fares program for the city buses is now permanent. Now, when the program began two years ago, one concern was whether letting people ride the bus for free would attract crime. But a recent study by the Transit Department found that crime did not increase under the zero fares. Last night, city councilors voted 6-3 to three in favor of making the program permanent. Areas of the Santa Fe National Forest impacted by the Hermit's Peak Calf Canyon fire will be undergoing seeding treatments over the next two weeks. The project area consists of nearly 12,000 total acres in the Santa Fe National Forest and parts of the Carson National Forest. The treatment will help stabilize hillsides to reduce post-fire runoff and slow erosion. A new lawsuit could throw a voter-approved tax on million-dollar homes in Santa Fe into question. A lawsuit filed last month has several plaintiffs questioning whether the city has the legal authority to create that tax. For now, the tax is set to go into effect in July of next year. Erica. And here's a look at our threat index. It is moderate. We're seeing some mountain snow, so there may be slick spots on the roads and gusty winds this morning. A transitional living facility that helps people recover from addiction will soon be able to help even more people. Española Pathways Village is a 14 unit shelter that helps those who are homeless or struggling with addiction. The nonprofit says they'll be adding eight more units to their facility. Construction is set to start in spring 2024. The New Mexico Holocaust and Intolerance Museum will soon have a new home. It's going to be in the Windrock Town Center. The museum says that Winrock, the, that location rather, is going to be considered as an interim space. It's with the ultimate goal being to raise funds to build a standalone museum in the future. Actors and Hollywood studios have reached a tentative deal that would end the Hollywood actor strike. Exact details of that deal are currently unknown, but the two parties were divided on several issues, including wages, health care, streaming service residuals, and the use of artificial intelligence. Erica. All right, to check on traffic, the maps are clear, no accidents or slowdowns to report. And here's a look at Tracker heading south on I-25 toward MLK. Everything is moving up to speed. Well, some basketball fans were frustrated this week after a rogue bat caused a delay during the game. It was on Tuesday night at a game between Sacramento State and Nevada. The creature descended upon the court, forcing officials to pause the game as they tried to catch it. Players on the floor were even seen dodging the bat as it flew around. Time now for the five facts. At number five, a massive Lego convention is coming to the Duke City. Professional Lego artists, they will come from across the country to display their Lego masterpieces at Expo New Mexico next year. While well, the Brick Convention will be in Albuquerque on January 20th and 21st, complete with massive Lego displays, Lego vendors, and meet and greets available with the cast members from the Lego Masters TV show. Tickets go for around $15 and they could sell out soon. At number four, Albuquerque Zero Fares program for city buses is now permanent. When the program began two years ago, one of the biggest concerns was whether letting people ride the bus for free would attract crime. But a recent study by the Transit Department found that crime did not increase because of the program. City councilors voted 6-3 to three in favor of the measure. Now that vote comes after the decision to make fares free on Sunvans and ART buses. And number three, it's going to be a colder day today. This is a look at our daytime temperatures. We'll start in the 40s this morning and only climb into the low 50s throughout the afternoon with a mix of sun and some occasional clouds.
And number two, we're learning more about a Rio Rancho teen facing three felony charges after a school resource officer says they discovered drugs, cash and vapes in his car on campus and including a gun. Back in September, school resource officers at Rio Rancho High School received a tip saying a student may have drugs on campus. The student was allegedly selling THC vapes out at the school and posting about it on Snapchat. The student also allegedly had more than $1,700 in cash on him, as well as the handgun. He was taken into juvenile detention because of that gun. And at number one this morning, city leaders say that they are one step closer to fulfilling the Department of Justice Settlement Agreement. In the latest report from the Independent Monitor, Albuquerque police was found to be in 94% compliance with the DOJ reforms. APD Chief Harold Medina says that there is still work to do. Well, the latest report indicates that the city is having issues with staffing, especially around the Civilian Police Oversight Agency. That next report will be out in January.